Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozord, and in this video, I want to talk about laser shot pinning simulation in Abacus. How to ask your video related questions? Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content. I will talk about explanation of modeling strategy, explanation of the reference paper for modeling LSP process, explanation of the modeling details in each of the Abacus CAE modules, comparing the results of the dynamic and static models, and finally, I will talk about next tutorial content. In this tutorial, the 3D modeling procedure of the laser shot pinning process in Abacus is explained according to a paper. Laser shot pinning simulation consists of two parts. The loading due to the laser shot is applied in the first part and a dynamic simulation is conducted. In the second part, the calculated stress field of the first part is used as the initial condition of the second part where force equilibrium analysis is conducted that provides the final residual stress field. This tutorial explains the procedure of doing both of these and the simulation results are discussed. Now I want to talk about modeling strategy. This is the schematic of the laser shot pinning process. This is the laser source this is the laser shot and this is the specimen. Loading due to the laser shot is modeled by defining pressure on the laser spot domain. This is the laser spot. In the first part of the simulation, the shock waves must be simulated using the dynamic explicit step. Infinite elements are used around the geometry for modeling the silent boundaries. This region must be modeled as silent boundary. So the boundaries of the model will be approximately non-reflecting. The laser shot pinning process is simulated according to this paper. This paper investigates the residual stress field created in several kinds of geometry including convex, concave, and flat geometries. In this tutorial, the investigation of flat geometry is explained in detail. Now I want to show you this paper. This is the mentioned paper. And this is the model of the flat geometry. As there are two symmetric planes in the problem, only one-fourth of the geometry is modeled. This is one-fourth of the geometry. Boundary conditions are applied to the symmetric faces of the model geometry. Symmetric boundary conditions are applied to these faces. According to the picture, finite elements are surrounded by the infinite elements. For creating the model, first we must select a system of units. This is the selected system of units for doing the simulation. By employing partitioning tools, the geometry is partitioned to define infinite elements around the finite ones. These are the infinite element regions and this is the finite element region. Now I want to talk about material definition. The material response of the component to high strain rates can be significantly 
different from static and quasi-static loading conditions. The Johnson Cook model is a good choice for this purpose. Since the thermal effect is minimal for LSP process, the temperature terms can be removed from the model. If the isotropic plasticity model without rate dependency is used, the simulation is not accurate. I have defined density, elastic, plastic with rate dependency. I have selected Johnson Cook hardening with Johnson Cook rate dependency. And I have defined the coefficients according to the paper. Here, the temperature terms are set to zero because we want to conduct a mechanical simulation instead of a thermomechanical simulation. To model the dynamic part of the laser shot pinning process, both the dynamic explicit and dynamic implicit steps can be used, since both steps account for inertial forces. However, according to the use of a large number of elements in the model, the dynamic explicit step can solve the problem faster and uses less physical memory resources. So the dynamic explicit step is preferred. For the unloading simulation, the best choice is the static general step. It should be mentioned that this step cannot be used with the dynamic explicit one simultaneously. So to use the static general step, another model must be created and then the result of the first model must be defined as the initial condition of the second one. This is the first model that is dynamic and this is the second model that is static. Now I want to talk about a step definition of the first model. This is the normalized pressure magnitude of laser shot versus time. The time period of the step is equal to three times of the laser shot duration. So the induced shock waves can have enough time to propagate through the finite element region. As you can see, the time period of the dynamic step is equal to three times of the laser shot duration. Laser shot loading must be defined as a distributed surface load. The pressure can have different mathematical descriptions. In the first mathematical description, the pressure is only a function of time. And in the second description, the pressure is a function of time and position. In the first description, by defining a tabular amplitude, the function is defined. And in the second definition, D load or VD load subroutine must be used to define the pressure loading. Now I want to talk about laser shot loading definition. By using get data graph digitizer, several points can be extracted from the picture of the curve. Then a tabular amplitude is defined according to the extracted data. In this project, I have used get data graph digitizer to select several points of this curve and create the tabular amplitude. The finite element region is meshed using C3D8R elements and the infinite element region is meshed by using SYN3D8 elements. Amicus CAE doesn't support this type of element. These elements are created by editing the IMP file of the model. Now I want to show you the Abacus model. This is the geometry of the model and this partition is created for applying the pressure load of laser shot. I go to property module. In the abacus, only the elastic mechanical behavior must be assigned to the infinite element region. So I have defined two materials. This material is assigned to the infinite element region and this material is assigned to the finite element region. 
I have defined density and elastic and in this material I have defined density elastic plastic with rate dependency In the first model, I have defined a dynamic explicit step. And these are the settings of this step. There is no setting in the interaction module. In the load module, I have defined pressure due to the laser shot. And I have defined symmetric boundary conditions. And this is the generated mesh. Now I go back to the slides. Conducting the second part of the simulation. In the second part of the LSV simulation, the calculated stress field of the first model must be used as the initial condition of the second part where force equilibrium analysis is conducted and provides the final residual stress field. For conducting the second part, a copy of the first model is created and modified. The modifications are listed below. Changing the step from dynamic explicit to static general or dynamic implicit when convergence issues arise. Removing the loading due to laser shot. Defining predefined stress field by using the results of the first model. For conducting the second simulation, first I use the static general step that led to convergence issues. So I changed the step to dynamic implicit. As no large deformations happen in this simulation, the NLGM isn't activated. For conducting a quasi-static analysis, the application is set to quasi-static. In the second model, I have defined a stress predefined field for using the results of the first model. The specification is set to from output database file and I have selected the ODB file of the first simulation and I want to use the final results of this ODB file and I have entered the last increments number. This is the dynamic model result and this is the static model result. Now I go to Abacus to show you the settings of the second model. First, I use the static general step that led to convergence issues. So I use the dynamic implicit step. I have removed the pressure loading and these are the symmetric boundary conditions. And I have defined the predefined field This is the result of the first model and this is the result of the second model. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see, because of defining the stress predefined field, at the beginning of the second simulation, the MISES stress field is similar to the MISES stress field of the first simulation. And this is the calculated residual stress field. Now I go back to the slides. The package including Abacus modules and modified IMP files are ready for purchase. The package price and the payment details are provided in the video description. In the following tutorial, simulation of the LSP process including several laser shots will be explained in detail. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk or WhatsApp and we can make a special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high quality simulations for your thesis, exercises and industrial projects. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.